Explorers, Kita Explorer here, and today on my channel, I'm bringing you your final and comprehensive Aruba travel guide. So I'm going to give you what you need to know before you go to Aruba. And if you're interested in a certain segment of this video, you can go down below to the description box and click on that timestamp next to the chapter so you can be directed directly to that chapter instead of watching all the way through. So now let's get into today's video. Oh, and before we do, again, I have Kid Explorer here on my channel. I talk about all things travel and sustainability. So if you are interested in those topics, make sure you hit the subscribe button and a notification bell so you'll be notified when all of my videos are released. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. Now let's get into today's video. So the first thing I want to talk about is transportation. You have a couple different options that you can choose to get around Aruba. Aruba is a very small island. You can get around the island multiple times in one day, but it's not always the easiest to do it by foot. If you are in a certain neighborhood, definitely you can walk that neighborhood with no issue. It's very flat. You don't really have to worry about going up mountains or anything like that. But if you're trying to get from different areas of the island to another, you may want to consider different modes of transportation. One thing you can do, you can easily rent a car. They drive on the right side of the road and they don't have traffic lights. So that's something to be aware of if you're used to traffic lights and you're not used to traffic circles. They do have traffic circles with multiple lanes of traffic within the circle. If you're not used to that, you may not want to drive. And if you are a left side driver and you don't know about the right side, maybe you don't want to do that. Or if you're like me, I don't really like driving when I'm at home. So I definitely am not driving when I'm on vacation. But you can rent a car in Aruba and when you do rent a car, you will see the letter V on the license plate, which means you're a visitor. So rent a car is easy to get around the island with a car rental. Also, you can take the bus. They do have a bus that goes from each point of the island from north to south or south to north on the main road. The only problem is it doesn't go to the eastern part of the island and it's not going to stop everywhere and it does not go up to the California Lighthouse if you're interested in going up there. But it is a great way to get around. It will save you money by taking the bus, but you do have to plan ahead and look at the bus schedules to make sure you do not miss the bus when you need to. Another way to get around is by taxi. You can easily go to your hotel, rep and ask for, hey, can I, you know, can you call me a taxi? The taxis are pretty affordable, but it can break the bank if you're constantly wanting to take a taxi. It can start to add up. So you would want to make sure you pay attention to that. I ended up taking a taxi from the Palm Beach area all the way down to San Nicolas because I just had to go to O'Neill Caribbean Kitchen. That taxi, I think, was like $40 US dollars. That is a lot of money and can definitely add up if you're constantly doing something like that. Taxis can add up, but it is a mode of transportation. And if you do take a taxi, you want to make sure that license plate says TX on it. TX means an official taxi designated by Aruba. Also, you can easily just rent a bike. They have bike stations throughout Aruba where you can just rent one and you can go along. I believe they are electric. So you can go on and be, you know, eco-friendly and save money in your pocket and you can stop when you want and you don't have to worry about catching a bus, whatever. So it's definitely a great way to get around Aruba as well. Also, for transportation, they do not have ride sharing. So you cannot rely on that when you go to Aruba. Now let's talk about the climate, the weather in Aruba. Aruba is actually a desert. I was told it rains about 16 inches in a year. And I mean, when I went, it had already rained like 16 inches in a week in my home. <laughs> so 16 inches in a year is not a lot of water. So it's very desert terrain. You will see cacti throughout their country, right next to an ocean. Also, where Aruba is located, they're actually located outside of the hurricane belt. So if you do make a trip there during hurricane season, they're probably not gonna have much of anything from the hurricane at most probably some rain off the hurricane as if you know like here in atlanta we do get rain off of hurricanes a lot they'll get rain off the hurricane and actually it will suck wind from aruba aruba can be windy like windy 
windy. Like ladies, be cautious of wearing a dress. But it actually will suck the wind away so it'll be even hotter when hurricanes are going through the Caribbean. But you do have to be aware, you know, if you're flying there during a hurricane, that could be also a problem. But anyway, that's a different discussion. They are outside the hurricane belt and since they're outside of that belt of weather, they also are away from when, you know, the sargasm, the seaweed rolls up onto the shores like in Florida or I don't know, the Bahamas or whatever. They don't get that either because of their location outside of that belt. Now let's talk about the beaches. There are beaches all over the island, of course. I mean, like, come on, it's a beautiful island. They have beautiful beaches. Every beach I went to was absolutely stunning. And the good thing about their beaches is that every single beach on the island is open to the public. There is not one beach that is private on Aruba's island. Yes, there is the Renaissance Island, but that is a separate piece of land away from Aruba. Other than that, the beaches are all public. Hotels may have a certain section on the beach that is private to just the um, hotel guests, but that entire beach is not theirs and you can go on there as a guest of Aruba or a local of Aruba, but they are all public beaches. No cost, no denied access to beaches in Aruba. And also, one good thing about the beaches is that they have nets up around the beaches to keep sharks away from shore meaning the sharks don't come and attack you but when you're out there just floating along <laughs> on the shore so they do have nets at the beach to keep sharks out another awesome thing about aruba is that they are a sustainable island they are definitely focused on sustainability and protecting their environment as well as the world they do not believe in single-use plastics there is an exception. I did see plastic water bottles, but other than that, they don't do, they definitely don't do straws. They are going to give you either a cup or a paper straw, or you're not going to see plastic bags. You're going to get paper bags, but I would highly recommend just taking you a reusable bottle or getting one plastic bottle and refilling it to make sure you are supporting their goal of not having and using single use plastics. And when you do buy a plastic water bottle, Make sure you recycle it properly while you're there. Also, you want to make sure you get the proper sunscreen. They do not allow for people to wear sunscreen that harms coral reefs. If your sunscreen has oxybenzone ingredient in it, that means it is not good for the coral reefs and the ocean and animals in it, and it can actually kill them with that chemical in your sunscreen. So you wanna make sure you take and use sunscreen that is good for the environment. They're gonna sell sunscreen there if you didn't bring any, or you can pick up the all good sunscreen. That's the one I use because it is free of those ingredients that harms coral reefs. I did learn some interesting facts from locals about Aruba while I was there, and I would like to share them with you. Obviously there's a lot of history and a lot of facts about Aruba, and I can't share them all in this video, but I do wanna share these. So. Everyone on the island of Aruba is employed, except for those who are in jail, unfortunately. But the government makes sure that their locals are employed. Also, local Aruvians are only allowed to go to the casinos twice a month. They are registered once they go into the casino because they don't want people going bankrupt and having gambling addiction. The casinos are mainly there for tourists. Also, the island of Aruba, they don't have much crime. You don't really have anything to worry about when it comes to safety. Their biggest crime issue is related to drugs due to their proximity to Colombia. So they have a lot of trafficking of drugs within Aruba, and that's who is usually in the jail system there is people who have trafficked trafficked drugs and they are usually foreigners. Also, the locals are required to learn four or five different languages. Their main language is Papiamento. Papiamento is kind of a combination of multiple languages. And that's actually what you're gonna see written on the street signs. You may think it's Dutch, but it's not, it's Papiamento. Also, they are required to learn Dutch, English, and Spanish. And I think they may, it's, I'm not too sure on the fifth one, I think they may learn some French or Portuguese. It's one of, the, one of those. I, I can't remember. If you're from Aruba, please let me know what the fifth language is. So I was very impressed that our tour guide could actually speak English fluently. He had a Dutch family on the, on the bus. He spoke that fluently. 
He spoke his local language fluently. And I heard him speak three languages fluently with no issue because they are required to learn that specifically because their island main um, main economy is tourism. And with people coming in from different cultures, you need to learn those different languages. Also, San Nicolas is the oldest city in Aruba. So if you wanna go check out the oldest city, definitely go down to San Nicolas. This is the oldest city because when the oil refineries were opened in Aruba, people from surrounding islands like Jamaica, Granada, they came there and they settled in San Nicolas around the oil refineries. Also, there are over a hundred different nationalities on the island of Aruba because of the different migrations from different countries. So there is so much to learn about there, about this wonderful country, about the Dutch. Obviously, it is a Dutch island and how they settled there and why they settled there and the aloe. There is a lot to learn in Aruba and I highly recommend that you take a tour I'll leave the link to the tour down below where you can actually learn more about the island. And of course, there are plenty of things to do and plenty of places to eat at in Aruba. If you're interested in learning about what you can do while you visit Aruba, I will leave the link to my video below where I give an extensive layout and links to places to check out and do while in Aruba. I'll also have a video about where to eat in Aruba, where you can check that out. But you will find a lot of American restaurants in Aruba, which I was not having it. I didn't want no KFC, McDonald's, Wendy's, Applebee's. What else did I see? Hooters. I don't want any of that. I see that here in Atlanta. I don't want that when I go out of the country. But they do have a lot of those restaurants to cater to Americans, unfortunately. But they do have their own local spots. And that's what I went to in my video so i want you to definitely go check that out so you can see and get some recommendations of places of where to eat in aruba also places to stay you can stay at the renaissance rent creek which has their own private island it is a wonderful resort i have a tour of that on my channel as well which i have linked below as well as the courtyard aruba resort which is in palm beach and that is another lovely resort for you to check out i also have a tour of that on my channel which will be linked below also, if you just want to read everything, I do have an itinerary for my Aruba trip with links and laid out on different days of things for you to do to give you some recommendations. You can purchase that at the link below. It is only two US dollars, very cheap for you. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me um, and I'll try to guide you the best way I can. Also really quickly about tipping. Tipping is not required in Aruba, and it's something that I always have to research before I go a place. And it's usually at the very last minute. But it's not required, but that doesn't mean you don't have to. You can tip people if you would like in Aruba, but it's just not required. Lastly, let me talk about safety as an African-American female. For me, I was felt very safe in Aruba. Like I could go out and walk around at day, at night, with no issue, getting in taxis with no issue and um just never a problem i didn't have people approaching me like you know here in the u.s you might have random people approach you sometimes that you may feel as of a threat to you you don't have that in aruba you don't have a concern that, that something's going to happen to you as a woman in aruba obviously always use your common sense but to me i felt very safe and did not have an issue while i was there Okay, explorers, so this is the end of the Aruba travel guide and what you need to know before you go to Aruba. We talked about different types of transportation. We talked about where to stay, what to do, places to eat. We talked about safety. We talked about some facts about Aruba. We talked about the weather. We talked about beaches. We just talked about so much in this video. So make sure if you enjoyed this video, you hit the like button. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. It is free for you to do so and helps me provide more and better content to you in the future. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about this video, make sure you leave that down below in the comment box. And make sure you share this video with your friends, family, and social media networks because you never know who's planning a future trip to Aruba. Also, if you're interested in supporting my business more, you can go to my travel merchandise shop down below to purchase you some traveling gear. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day or night wherever in the world you are. Bye.